<laughs> hey, welcome to the channel. Today I am about to check out Alex Mercer versus Cole McGrath, some dude from Infamous. And like I said before, I am locking in for Alex Mercer because Prototype was a really crazy thing is I didn't even really play Prototype 1. I only played Prototype 2. And I really like I actually genuinely enjoyed the game. So I was like, if it Alex Mercer it is because he was a villain in that game and I heard you were the protagonist at the first one. I, I don't know, I gotta I don't know, I I, I I gotta play that ish. But essentially, yeah. I'm just going with Alex Mercer because he was fire, he was cold, and then I forgot the character that we had, it was a black guy. Hey, for the moves, the shit Oh my gosh, nostalgia kicking in. But essentially, yeah, that's essentially why I'm going for it. Infamous, I've never played it, but I had a friend that played it and he really liked the character. He really talked a lot about him. And I all I know is that a lot of people that's like it's a world of people's superpowers. I prefer the dark era of 2020 type setting. No, no, I'm not saying I wanted to come back, but essentially, like, that's just what it was, kind of, in a weird way. But, yeah, with that said, let's see who's going to win. But like I said before, I got to go with my boy Alex. Cole McGrath, the patron saint of infamous. Alex Mercer, the blacklight virus prototype from Prototype. prototype yeah. That's right, champions. You voted for it, so we're finally doing it. Long after these characters were ever relevant. Oh, hey, look what I found in the trash. Mm. An old script we wrote for this very matchup way back in 2013. Wait, Whoa. we haven't emptied our trash in 10 years? He's Wiz and I'm Boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and That's skills to find so out who would win a death, death battle. battle. Yeah, <laughs> let's go. It's in 3D. With great power comes great responsibility. Tommy McGuire's not the only superhero who's had to learn that lesson. Cole McGrath was just your average delivery boy in Empire City until one day he opened a package that exploded in his face. This was the Ray Sphere, a device that, upon erupting, destroyed much of the city and tore through Cole at the atomic level, killing him instantly. Nah, actually, he scooped up some superpowers. Cool. Oh, yeah, I forgot. This was uh, something of a choice based game, decision based game type stuff where, like, it's like good ending or bad ending. Wait, which one is the canonical ending? Oh, because remember, like, all I know is that something happened to the city. I mean, I should, I shouldn't talk on this, this guy. I don't know. Symphony, Symphony superpowers. But that's just more what specifically. I know. Cole I know like became a like conduit, it. one of many beings who were granted supernatural abilities from the Ray Sphere explosion, which also turned Empire City into a godforsaken hellscape. This world needed a hero, or at least an anti-hero willing to clean up the mess he sort of technically made. Cole put his powers to the test, battling rogue superpowered conduits, including the mastermind behind the blast. Kessler. Let's be real. None of Cole's powers are as. I got a question. How, how does that beast scale to the Goliath? Because if you know the Goliath, that shit was. I don't want to say scary, but annoying. Nick Nasty has his parkour skills, but his ability the to Goliath, manipulate right? electricity is pretty sweet too. Cole controls electromagnetic energy. Not only can he generate a smorgasbord of powerful lightning attacks, he can also manipulate thermal, kinetic, and gravitational energies. Mm. Electromagnetism is pretty broad, after all. This includes his radar pulse, which detects the bioelectricity inside organisms even if they're hidden or transformed. And for good measure, he got to add some ice powers to his kit. He can throw ice grenades, shoot ice spikes, and let out some epic ice farts. <laughs> Huh. He can All levitate right. like electric Iron Man, grind on rails like Shadow the Hedgehog, read your mind like Goku's muffin button, charge up with extra karmic energy. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, the uh, Dragon Ball Z bridge reference. Like Shadow the Hedgehog and generate force fields like Shadow the Hedgehog. But these aren't just force fields. They literally convert any matter they touch into energy that Cole absorbs. That's insane. How's that? Are you familiar with a little equation called E equals MC squared? Yeah. No. Oh, well, uh, it defines the mathematical relationship between matter and energy. Essentially, how much energy any given mass contains. Yeah, that's the okay, line. the largest mass object Cole absorbs is a 343 gram helicopter chain gun round. Perfectly converting matter to energy is technically impossible, but hey, this is a video game. The mass contained in that bullet, when multiplied by the speed of light squared, would release an energy equivalent to over 7 megatons of TNT. Mm. This means Cole's energy output is basically fueled by a nuclear reactor. Oh! So he's like a living super bum, always ready to go off. Sounds like my first ex-wave. Should he somehow run low on energy, he can drain it from nearby appliances to recharge. He's even learned to drain the bioelectricity from people, like this. 
Yikes. Golgan focuses electricity I mean, through his amp and giant like tuning fork, bio. which lets him ring around the rosy to death. Yeah. Or he can just make lightsabers out of his hands. That's cool too. And because he follows Pokemon rules, Cole's extra resistant to electric attacks. With these powers, Cole chewed through Kessler's forces, including Sasha, whose black tar powers could infect and control minds. And okay. he eventually faced down that son okay. of a bitch himself and pwned his ass, despite Kessler having his exact same powers. Coincidence? Turns out the architect of Cole's misery was himself from an alternate future timeline. Manipulating events from the shadows to ensure oh, this version of Cole yeah, became a better that. hero than Kessler ever was. I think yeah. I remember you watching see, Cole's superpowers are molded through his actions, actions increasing in power and utility based on how good or evil he acts. Naturally, as a good person, Cole shaped his powers to be more focused to target the bad guys. That pussy shit! Evil Cole is way more awesome, sus! He blows everything up! Collateral damage? Who cares? He can control fire! Oh. Well, okay. that just happened. Uh, who wrote this shit? The point is, Kessler's whole plan was meant to prevent the apocalypse, mm. which would appear in the form of the Beast, a conduit of unimaginable power. Cole is strong enough to create massive thunderstorms, fast enough to route electricity moving at 90% the speed of light, and maybe thanks to Kessler, tough enough to take on the Beast, which possessed the power of the Ray Sphere itself. I'm it could regenerate at an atomic TNT. level and eradicate all of Empire City in a single attack. Fortunately, after a grueling battle, Cole defeated the Beast once and for all. Though ultimately, it wasn't Cole's power that made him a hero. In order to stop a plague created by the race sphere, Cole sacrificed his life, eradicating well, the conduit genes did. and saving <laughs> all of humanity. Sure, oh, okay, he also killed ending. thousands of conduits in the process, but ending. hey, what's a few corpses when building a better tomorrow? This trolley stops for no one. Cole was remembered as a saint by the people of Numeray, as a hero by the friends he left behind, and an inspiration to future generations. A true testament to the responsibility of power. Okay, even though he calls it... Let's yeah, okay, so when, when he said seven something uh, megatons, uh, so what, he's uh, city level, I guess? I'm just trying to think, um, isn't the Goliath on that level, or is he just city block level? Because he's not, he's definitely not building, he's above building. He was doing the most, I will say that. With great power comes great responsibility. But not everybody's got an Uncle Ben to tell him that. Alex Mercer woke up in hell. Manhattan Island was gripped by the horrific Black Light virus, transforming its citizens into terrifying monsters. Mm. Alex had no memories. He was a man without a past, and maybe no... Oh yeah, they called him Zeus for a minute. I was just used to him as Mercer. Future, but he did have one thing. The black light virus can rewrite your cells all the way down to your DNA. And somehow it granted it's Alex so incredible itchy. superhuman abilities. He can infect anyone he touches well, with this virus, altering their biology at the molecular level in seconds and giving him complete control over their actions. Mm. So Alex pushed on, desperate to avenge himself and the city by finding whatever monster unleashed this nightmare and eat them. Yeah, he can consume people to give himself a power boost. He's mm. like Kirby if. Kirby listened to Lincoln Park. This extra biomass gives him superhuman strength, yep. a greater metabolic rate, mm. increased reaction times, and even a regenerative healing factor. Mm. Essentially, Alex is an ever-evolving super being, the ultimate being. Oh, oh, like Shadow the Hedgehog! By consuming victims, Alex also receives all their memories and experiences, yep. including Peter Randall, a 69-year-old nice. man whose entire history Alex processed in just 11 seconds. Being able to condense that much information into that time frame mm -hmm. means Alex can pursue Receive events happening within five nanoseconds. Which is about how long I was married to my second ex-wife. Alex can shapeshift his body at will, creating disguises, increasing his muscle this. mass, and forming nearly unbreakable armor. Yep. And when he wants to kill someone, he can become his own weapon, yeah, turning his limbs into claws into and like, blades, yep. or generating countless Whips. tendrils that give yeah, him unmatched control over tendrils. his environment. With these goopy powers, he came up with a bunch of Street Fighter moves, like the air dash, the cannonball, the bullet dive drop, and the Hunter Dirt Nap. Pretty sure that was my third ex-wife's boyfriend's stripper name. And after what? consuming enough people, Alex reaches critical mass and can unleash his evil slop in powerful ultimate attacks. Mm -hmm. Like the Tendril Barrage Devastator. Ah, oh, 
God, beautiful. Mm. Despite being seen as the world's most wanted terrorist, fair, Alex used his powers to stop the spread of the virus and end the city's nuclear devastation. I don't know, it was bro. Then... Part two to part, the second part, told a different story. All he learned the truth. He wasn't Alex Mercer at all. He was the black light virus itself, mm. which absorbed the memories and likeness of the real Alex Mercer, who was not only dead, but actually responsible for all of this in the first place. Oh. To decipher this, I recreated the black light virus myself, the most dangerous. Oop. Uh, why is it? That's actually a crazy twist. They know that. He's right behind me, isn't he? So the man Alex was hunting the whole time was himself. Was himself. Dun, dun, dun. That's right, Boomstick. Turns out Dr. Alex Mercer helped create the Blacklight virus, and when things didn't work out and he was about to die, he recklessly unleashed it upon the city. What a petty SOB. What he didn't know was that the virus would merge with his sentience and memories and become a he new also, Alex. How? He also, he, like, he just kept spreading that ish. I remember, like, he, uh, he spread it to the stadium, like... I, bro, he wanted everybody to have it, and what, I'm not trying to spoil, but, like, I got a spoil. In the second game, bro, we even had to, like, clip this dude because of that. Did, I think we clipped it. Why? Don't question it. It's a... Did, did I ever finish it? I think I finished it. Right? I think I... Should I? Nothing burger. But is this mass of viral material that calls itself Alex actually human in any meaningful way? The poor bastard sure tried to be. Too bad humans can be dicks and everyone kept betraying him. Even mm. the so-called love of his life who shot him in the face. Yeah. Oh, so Alex figured, uh, obviously, humanity had to go. Not just go, but be made better. Whatever goodness remaining with this Alex was left behind as he plotted to unleash a second Black Lives virus recreating humanity into a super species in his own image yep. great power became great terror classic anime rpg villain stuff and he was strong enough to do it alex can casually tear buildings apart mm. dodge supersonic tank shells yep. and even defeated the supreme hunter who was tough enough to survive a nuclear blast that would have leveled manhattan based on the blast radius given in game that's 450 good. kilotons of tnt speaking of nukes alex survived one. his healing factor is off the chain and after being blasted into paste all he needed was the tiniest bit of himself to come back good as new. His healing Ooh. occurs at the cellular level, making him virtually impossible to kill so long as he keeps consuming. Mm. But attempting to take over the world and kill millions of people pissed off a certain James Heller, a mm, dude who had just amazing. had enough of his fucking weird Yo, I killed his daughter. shit, who used the same virus powers to consume yep. Alex yep. once and for all. Mm. Live by the Kirby symbiote, Yo. die by the Kirby symbiote. But was Alex just a virus? After all, I mean, what's more human than the urge to conquer the world, drive its species to the slaughter, consume its raw genetic resources, and crown yourself king? Maybe the day Alex Mercer died was the day he truly became human. Wow, that was yeah, intense. That's the kind of, yeah. yeah, it was. I feel like we got this in the bag. Honestly, oh, like I was saying, man, like, I feel like we got this in the bag. 450, that should be like. That's above city, right? It should be, if I'm not mistaken. It is. We good. I, I feel positive. Confident. All right, the combatants are set. Let's end this debate once and for all. It's time for a death battle! Well, let's go, Mercer. Yep, Alex. That's Alex. It's gotta be Alex. <laughs> Mm. Look at his dude. I think I've still got room for dessert. Buddy, you are one sick freak. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Oh, 
getting factors. Eat somebody, bro. You gotta eat somebody. Oh, he ate a whole lot of them. Pause. He got a lot of abilities. We lost just with the way he's talking. It's a real transformation. You really stroked me off and didn't let me finish. That is crazy. I was right there, right at the edge, and you just. <laughs> you played too much. That's. That's oh, crazy. Now I know where that script was in the trash. I had to hear someone say awesome sauce. <laughs> both opponents were incredibly versatile and deadly, and both could match each other's powers blow for blow. Yeah, they could each create weapons, amplify like their strength, strong, and fight at range. But could Cole survive Alex's infection? Well, Alex would usually need to weaken an opponent to get that trick to work. Even then, the Ray Sphere incident. While the Ray Sphere creates conduits, Kessler was unsure if Cole would survive its explosion, as stated in the mission, The Truth. The beast was torn apart by a Ray Sphere, so Cole's survival accounts for his own. I'ma look up a video, hating on death battle, just so I could check it out and... and the created too. Cole's powers in the first place ripped apart everyone else down to the atomic level. And the beast's attacks were capable of the same thing. Considering the blacklight virus only works down to molecular DNA, it's reasonable to say Cole would be able to resist it. Sure, Alex could have potentially consumed Cole's biomass Cole's to give himself bio. an edge, but Cole could just do the same thing to Alex, absorbing his bioelectricity to power himself back up. But nothing could challenge the gap. He's more powerful, okay. Better ranged options, okay, I saw that. Could resist the black light virus, really now. Raider sense counters Alex's disguises. Mm -hmm. But he's vulnerable to corruption. Alex is smarter, more experienced, harder to kill, yada yada. Notably slower. Ah, yeah, I saw that. I knew he was slower, but. Just the strength-wise, it's just... Power. Uh, Everything Alex survived could simply not match Cole's force fields, and especially not the power of the beast. The blast the beast created actually had a much wider radius than the one the Supreme wow, Hunter could AP survive. To so compete so with these foes, beast. this means Cole was simply far more powerful than Alex. Speaking of the beast, Cole's ability to disintegrate it at the atomic level meant that even Alex's crazy 
see molecular regeneration couldn't stand up to Cole's might. Just like how Cole could overpower Kessler despite his resistance to electricity, or how he resisted Sasha's mind control powers, which were eerily similar to the Blacklight virus. But I bet you're wondering, what if Alex fought evil Cole instead? Well, it'd be even worse, because that Cole took the beast's power for himself. That's good night for Angry Virus Boy. Alex was a versatile, deadly opponent, but Cole's counters, speed, and raw power gave him the edge. Alex got the Cole shoulder, just like this stupid script. The winner is Cole McGrath. Yeah. All right, man. Thanks for watching. And hey, are you a Death Battle member? We've got a ballot going on right now where members get to choose a matchup man. for the next season. So Just click the join button and jump into our well, Champions sorry. Discord. What about Freeze? Oh, yeah. Oh, what the fuck is that? Which version are they choosing, though? Are they just talking about it in general? Because before Black Freeze, that thing is, without a doubt, you already know who I'm rooting for, who I'm going for. I'm not saying he's going to win, but I'm also not saying he's going to lose. The thing is, a lot I've heard a lot of crazy, insane stuff about Transformers. Y'all already know I'm picking Freeze, of course, about that. But I've heard crazy things about Transformers. Not most, but a lot about uh, Optimus Prime and some guy called Omnicron. So that has me worried because, uh, if I'm not mistaken, it's, it's a comic. And you all know how comic book characters are. And then me, I was surprised when I heard that um, Optimus Prime reaches multiversal. I'm like, bro, this nigga's a truck. He's a street level beast at best. Or building or city, but multiverse. I was, I was, I was appalled. Even, even the fucking movie one. Some guy told me he could reach like planetary. Bro, I was okay. Pla planetary, I can believe that. But like this gal, like galaxy type ish. That's why I was just like, he's a truck. I believe Vin Diesel was universal before I believed anybody from Transformers was essentially. So Megatron. I'm a vote for Frieza. I don't care if he win or lose. I, I I'm going for Dragon Ball here. So and also Black Frieza came out. So I don't know that that might do something for us. That might that might let me finish this time. So uh yeah man. With that said, if you enjoyed the video, like, comment, share, subscribe. Let me know which other video to check out next, and I'ma do so. But for now, I'ma see y'all when I see y'all. So see ya.